Today we'll finish up the clam contract. So we'll complete the positions.soul contract and clam.soul contract. First, I've defined a constant inside fixpoint128.soul. So if you look over here, it defines a constant called q128. What this is, is just one shift it over to the left 128 times. We're going to be multiplying this number by the liquidity and also dividing it by the liquidity. So moving on to the positions.soul contract, we'll finish this contract by scrolling down and completing these to-dos. So if you look at the function update, let's first go back to the clam contract and see where this function is called. So if I go back to the clam contract and inside the function update position, we can see here, scrolling down, that position.update is called inside here. So this means that when we modify a position, when we add or remove a liquidity, this function update position will be called and the library function position.update will be called. We'll complete this library by calculating the amount of tokens owned and then updating it inside here. The input for this function is self, which will be the information about the position. So what we're going to do is increment tokens.o for this self variable. Okay, so first let's calculate the amount of tokens owed. Say uint 128 tokens owed 0 is equal to uint 128. And then we'll use a library called moldib, full math dot moldib. What this function moldib will do is it will multiply two, 2 to the 256 bit numbers and then divide by another 2 to the 256 bit number without any overflow. Here what we want to multiply is the difference of fee growth now and before, which will be contained inside self. And then we multiply this by the liquidity of this position. And then we'll divide it by Q128, which we defined over here. So I'm going back here. Now the reason why we're dividing by Q128 is because liquidity is multiplied by Q128. Say so fee growth inside 0x128. This will contain the latest fee growth inside 0x128 minus the previous one, which will be for the position self dot fee growth inside 0 last x128. We multiply this by the liquidity of the position, which will be self dot liquidity. And then we divide by q128, fixed point 128 times q128. Okay, so this is token 0 old. Let's also do the same for tokens old 1. Tokens old one will be fee growth inside 1x128, fee growth inside 1 last x128, multiply by liquidity, divide by q128. Okay, and the next step is to update the position. So here I'll say if tokens old 0 is greater than 0, or tokens old 1 is greater than 0, then we'll update the tokens old for this position. So say self dot tokens old 0 incremented by tokens old 0. And then we'll do the same for tokens old 1. Now notice that for the code above here we have an underscore self whereas here we don't have an underscore. This is because at the beginning of this function we loaded the self storage into memory and this is done to save guess. Okay and that completes the function for position. I'm gonna fix the spelling here liquidity and liquidity. Okay, let's move on to the clamp contract. So I'm going back up, I'm going to make sure that the position and the tick libraries are imported. And I'm also going to make sure that full math and fixed point one to eight libraries are imported. Okay, scrolling down, let's see what we need to do. First thing that we'll need to do is inside the function update position, we'll need to load fee growth global 0x128 and 1x128 from the state variables. Right here, I'll type fee growth global 0x128 and fee growth global 1x128. Okay, moving on, I'm gonna scroll down. Okay, the next thing that I'll need to do is get the fee growth inside and then pass it into this function, position.update. So first we'll say uint256 fee growth inside 0x128 and uint256 fee growth inside 1x128. This will be equal to ticks dot get fee growth inside and let's go check the ticks library to see what parameters we need to pass inside this function so go back to ticks library and then search for the function get fee growth inside 
The first parameter is the state variable ticks, tick lower, tick upper, tick current, and free growth global 0x128 and free growth global 1x128. So tick lower, tick lower, tick upper. The current tick will be tick and the free growth global that we just loaded above over here. So I'll just copy these and then paste them here. Okay, and the next step is to pass these free growth global inside into this function. So this will be fee growth inside 0x128 and fee growth inside 1x128. Okay, let's see what else we need to do. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is update global fee tracker if state liquidity is greater than zero. So where is this? This is inside the function swap. What we're doing here is we're updating the fee growth global inside the swap when it collects some fees. So say if state.liquidity is greater than zero, then state.fee.growth.global is one to eight. We'll increment it plus equals full math.moldiv. And here what we're going to multiply is the fee times q128 and then divided by the current liquidity in this tick. So say step dot fee amount, multiply this by 6.128 one two eight times q one two eight and divided by the current liquidity state dot liquidity okay so we completed all the to do's let's try compiling the contract inside my terminal i'll type forge build okay so there's an error so i'll go fix it line one eight three remove the comma and then try compiling the contract again okay and our contract compiled and this completes the code and the video series for the clan contract